Today on History You Should Know, April 8th, 1970. Three days before their mission, three astronauts received some bad news. One of their crew members was being replaced because of an exposure to German measles. Two of them had it as kids. Those were Commander Jim Lovell and Lunar Module Pilot Fred Hayes. But their Command Module Pilot, Ken Mattingly, had never had it. And so the decision was made. Mattingly would be replaced by Pilot Jack Swigert. Swigert was a great pilot, but this particular crew had been training together for months. But after hours and hours of briefing and deliberation, the mission was still a go. After all, there was too much resting on it, being one of the most important missions in the history of their country. And this close to the launch, there was no time to think about superstitions or bad omens. Lovell, Hayes, and Swigert could only afford to have one thing in mind, the mission. In three days, they were going to make history. They eventually did, but not in the way they or anyone else could have imagined. At that moment, all they knew was in three days, they were going back to the moon as the crew of Apollo 13. Before we begin today's episode, I would like to thank all of you who are already subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet, why? Just kidding. Please do. If you're listening to or watching this video podcast on Spotify, it would be cool if you could leave a five-star rating if you like the episode. Not gonna force you. Finally, if you haven't seen the previous episode, check it out now. Sit back, buckle up, relax, and enjoy the video in all its glory! Pagkatapos ng World War II, hindi nagtagal bago makaladkad muli ang buong mundo sa panibagong conflict. Ito, ang Cold War. Emerging as the world's superpowers, the US and USSR, once allies, turned into bitter rivals. The world would collectively hold its breath every time there was tension between the two countries. Living under the shadow of the mushroom cloud was not an easy existence. But since neither side really wanted to declare war on its nuclear-capable counterpart, they competed in everything else from political ideology to the Olympics. But one major arena both sides saw as a way to project power all over the world was to conquer a territory beyond our planet. Outer space. Naganap ang space race mula late 1950s hanggang early 70s. It was a game of constant one-upmanship, which the Soviets were initially winning. They successfully launched the first artificial satellite Sputnik 1 in 1957. As a reaction, the U.S. officially formed the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, in 1958. NASA dedicated endless manpower, research, and development to explore outer space. Project Mercury was a set of missions designed to put the first man into Earth orbit, ending with a safe return. But again, the Soviets beat them to it when cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to journey into outer space in April 1961. And so, in May of that same year, U.S. President John F. Kennedy gave a momentous speech. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. This would eventually become the Apollo program. As one can imagine, Venturing into unknown territory requires a ton of preparation, knowledge, and expertise. Kinailangan ng maraming misyon bago pa man makarating sa buwan. Each phase was a rehearsal for the next mission. After Project Mercury, NASA launched Project Gemini. 12 missions over 5 years that involved training astronauts and ground crew to test out new vessels that could fit multiple people, equipment, spacesuits, longer flight durations, flight techniques, moving in zero gravity, and performing scientific experiments. 
ang tagumpay ng mga Gemini missions ang nagsilbing daan para sa Apollo program. But the optimism that surrounded Apollo would soon vanish. On January 27, 1967, Astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee were rehearsing for their launch, which was scheduled in a few weeks. Sila dapat ang magiging crew ng pinakaunang Apollo mission. However, the initial design of the command module had major flaws, which led to a fire breaking out on board. In addition, the cabin pressure was 100% oxygen. Sa ganoong lugar, kahit ano, pwedeng maging flammable. At yun mismo ang nangyari. The three men perished within seconds and could not be saved. In their honor, the mission was called Apollo 1. There would be no Apollo 2 and 3. With their public image at an all-time low, NASA needed to bounce back. And the only way to do it would be to succeed. During the three unmanned flights Apollo 4, 5, and 6, they made the necessary adjustments to the design flaws. Pagdating ng 1968, handa na ang NASA para sa pinakaunang manned Apollo mission, Apollo 7. The crew of the Apollo 7 went into outer space aboard NASA's redesigned spacecraft. It proved to be a miracle. The mission was a complete success and put NASA right back on track. But then, the US heard about the Soviet Union's plan to send a man around the moon. When they found out, they knew they had to raise the stakes. So, less than three months after Apollo 7, Apollo 8's mission was drastically changed to orbit the moon. Among the three-person crew of Apollo 8 was that commander I mentioned in the beginning, Jim Lovell. On Christmas Eve 1968, he and his crew achieved something no human had ever done before, orbit the moon. As he went around the dark side of the moon, Lovell saw a mountain on the surface and proceeded to do something that would put all of humanity's future anniversary gifts to shame when he named it after his wife. In 2017, that mountain was officially named Mount Marilyn. After the success of Apollo 8, NASA surely thought they were ready to land on the moon. And to do that, one more crucial step was needed. Testing the third part of their spacecraft, the lunar module. Apollo 9 and 10 both succeeded in the testing and operation of all three parts of the spacecraft. Ang susunod na hakbang ay ito pa rin ang sinabi ni JFK. On July 20th, 1969, millions of people all over the world were glued to their TV screens and radios. Human beings were about to do the unthinkable. But astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were struggling to lower the lunar module onto the surface of the moon. They were about to go off target, but nothing would stop them now, for they had come too far and fought too hard. And so, after taking manual control, Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And the rest was history. After the success of Apollo 11, public interest in the Apollo program dwindled. People got bored. Apollo 12 may have improved the accuracy of the lunar landing, but it wasn't as interesting as the first landing. But that didn't stop NASA from proceeding with the next phase, scientific knowledge. By collecting samples from the moon, they hoped to discover its origins and with it, the origins of Earth itself. The first mission designated with that primary objective was Apollo 13. The success of the Apollo missions relied heavily on their spacecraft. If it failed, there would be no saving any of the astronauts. The redesign after Apollo 1 involved a new command module, or CM. That's where the astronauts would be strapped in during launch. From 100% oxygen, the atmosphere was changed to a much safer ratio of 60% oxygen and 40% nitrogen. 
the door was also redesigned for faster opening and closing in case of an emergency. The service module, or the SM, was connected to the back of the CM. It carried the fuel and power of the spacecraft. Bilang isang unit, tinawag itong CSM, o Command Service Module. As for the lunar module, or LM, or LEM, the LEM is docked right under the CSM. The CSM would detach from the LEM and then turn around to connect the top of the CSM to the top of the lunar module. Since there are three pilots, the commander and the lunar module pilot would transfer to the LEM while leaving the CM in the hands of the command module pilot. By the time of Apollo 13's launch, NASA had put its spacecraft design through the toughest tests and came out successful on the other side. On April 11th, 1970, Commander Jim Lovell was back for another mission to the moon. This time, he was meant to land. With him were Fred Hayes, Lunar Module Pilot, and Jack Swigert, the replacement Command Module Pilot mentioned at the beginning of this episode. Aside from the last-minute replacement, several other things happened before the launch that made the ground crew, also known as Mission Control, feel uneasy about the flight. Especially since this was a highly complicated mission. The plan was to land on a brand new spot on the moon, survey the area, and collect samples for data and experimentation. But choosing to land on the moon isn't as simple as steering the wheel and stepping on the gas of a car. In previous lunar missions, the idea was to position the spacecraft that would allow it to fly toward the moon and then get pulled into its orbit. Occasional and timed engine burns would be performed to correct the course. As for the return home, they used something called free return. If you've seen the movie The Martian, it's the same idea. The spacecraft would go close enough to be pulled in by the moon's gravity. This would loop the ship around the moon, acting like a slingshot that would fling them back to Earth. But the only way to do that was to fire their engines to leave the orbit at just the right angle at a precise time to head back towards Earth. Lahat ng ito kailangan ng expertise at precision. One tiny miscalculation can cause devastating results. But for the first two days, the crew of Apollo 13 had already performed the maneuver to angle their craft toward their target. Everything seemed to be going well so far. Nagbigay pa ng televised tour ng lunar module si Jim Lovell. But before calling it a day, they had to go through a list of routine checks. NASA's mission control asked them to stir up their cryogen tanks located in the SM, which were responsible for producing oxygen and fuel. This responsibility fell on Jack Swigert. But just as he started his task, a loud bang disturbed the silence of space. A few moments after the explosion, the astronauts called down to NASA with the now famous words, Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. And the problems just kept coming. Upon investigation, Lovell looked out the window and saw some type of gas escaping their vessel. Yun ang oxygen nila. The explosion damaged two out of their three oxygen tanks. Those were not only necessary for life support, but also fuel and providing water and electricity to the command module. Within a matter of minutes, their mission to land on the moon was aborted. Their objective went from scientific discovery to pure survival. The situation transformed into a race against time. Everything from here on out was uncharted territory, not only for NASA and the astronauts, but for all humankind. The mission objectives changed to transferring to the lunar module, shutting off all unnecessary power, and setting a course for a return to Earth. To return to Earth, they had to change the angle of the spacecraft 
to target the free return route since they were initially headed somewhere else. Kung hindi nila magawa ito, hindi sila makakauwi. To do this, the guidance system of the CM must be transferred to the computer of the LEM. Again, the CM was the main cockpit for the astronauts during the mission, and the LEM is the lunar module that's supposed to land on the moon. The LEM is only built for two people, and the CM was built for three people. The problem was, the computers of the CM and the LEM were totally different. And since power had to be conserved, the CM had to be shut down, which only gave them less than 15 minutes to accomplish this task. Lovell used his exceptional arithmetic skills to calculate their new course and wrote it down by hand within the allotted time. After confirming with mission control, they had to change course by engaging a fuel burn while steering using the LEM. They had limited fuel and the LEM wasn't designed for this kind of maneuver. But a coordinated effort and improvisation between the crew and mission control allowed them to steer the craft. Finally, they were on the free return trajectory. But they needed additional burns later in the journey, which meant saving what limited fuel they had. When they finally reached the moon, things seemed to finally start going as planned. Sa wakas, biglang tumahimik. They lost radio contact with mission control as they looped around the moon, which was expected. Swigert and Hayes, who had never been to space, used this bit of downtime to take pictures of the moon, while Lovell looked out the window and had to come to terms with the fact that he wasn't going to land this time either. Just a few hours after circling the moon, it was time for the second burn. Done at the right time with the right amount, it would allow them to head straight for Earth and cut their mission short by a day. Relying once again on the teamwork and training of both ground and mission crew, they were able to do this successfully. But like before, new problems kept popping up. Sumunod naman ang temperature. To conserve energy, they had to shut down most systems, which turned the spacecraft into a giant refrigerator. To conserve what little power they had in their batteries, they were using about 12 amps an hour. For reference, a standard electric stove requires about 20 to 50 amps of power. A car demands at least 200 amps to start successfully. At hindi lang ginaw ang problema nila. Pwede ring mag ang water supply at ang mga parachute na kailangan nila para sa re-entry at landing. They had no choice but to endure the cold and limit their water intake. And then there was the issue of carbon dioxide. Since the LEM wasn't built for more than two people and to be used for this long, the CO2 filters were starting to deteriorate. If it fails, they would suffocate. The CM had filters they could use as a substitute, but just like the computer, the filters were also incompatible. Mission Control quickly tried to work out a solution. A team on the ground tried to improvise a way to reshape the canisters by using what tools were available on board. Once they figured it out, it wasn't as simple as showing the astronauts what to do because they had no video feed. Someone had to explain the procedure step by step in great detail and hope for the best. And somehow, they succeeded in MacGyvering the canisters by using materials that included duct tape, plastic bags, and a sock. Absolutely amazing. When it was time to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, it was time to return to the CM. At this point, they didn't even know if it had completely frozen or if it functioned at all. But they had to return because the LEM didn't have the heat shield they needed to protect them as they entered. And even then, they didn't know if the explosion damaged the heat shield. 
Next was the issue of the angle upon re-entry. If the angle is too wide, they would bounce off the Earth's atmosphere. Too steep, and they'd burn up like a meteor crashing down to Earth. This needed to be the most precise part of the entire mission. If they failed this, it would all have been for nothing. And once again, with the coordination of everyone involved, they pulled it off. At timed intervals, all three astronauts assigned different jobs to each other. One would steer, one would turn the engines on and off, and one would be looking at a watch, acting like a guide when to do it and when to stop. To initiate re-entry, Lovell, Hayes, and Swigert had to jettison the rest of the ship. The first to go was the service module. Once detached, Lovell looked out the window and finally saw just how bad the damage was. An entire side was missing. It was a miracle they survived this long so far. And then it was time to restart the command module and detach the lunar module. By this point, Apollo 13 had somehow beaten all the odds. Pero nakasalalay ang lahat sa susunod na mga sandali. There was only one thing left to do. Stick the landing. The angle was right, and all the procedures were followed. But would the parachutes deploy? Was the heat shield undamaged? They have done all they can. All they could do was hope. Finally, the moment of truth. As Apollo 13 plummeted back to Earth, mission control lost communication. This was expected for about four minutes. Then the silence continued. Just like Apollo 11, the world was watching the developments of Apollo 13. Once again, the world held its breath. But this time, it wasn't to hear how man had taken his first steps on the moon. This was about conquering a different kind of impossible. This time, it was a desperate attempt to hear something, anything, from the men who have fought and beaten all the odds to make it back home. But still, there was silence. And just when all hope seemed to fade, Apollo 13 pierced the clouds and continued its descent towards the ocean. The parachutes worked. The heat shield was undamaged. They did it. They defeated the impossible. Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert landed on the Pacific Ocean on April 17, 1970. They received a hero's welcome, despite their mission being technically a failure. But NASA, the US government, and the rest of the world didn't see it that way. In the public's eye, these three and the brilliant men and women at NASA were heroes. One way or another, they made history, even if it's not the way they initially intended. The Apollo 13 astronauts received wide praise for their bravery and calm under pressure. All three men would later go on the record to praise the decision-making and professionalism of everyone at Mission Control. Apollo 13 also holds another record, the farthest any human being has traveled from Earth. But also for NASA, plenty of questions needed answers. The Apollo 13 incident forced them to rethink and redesign components for the spacecraft, such as the mismatched CO2 scrubbers and the design of the oxygen tank that exploded. Years later, Lovell would co-author a book called Lost Moon, The Perilous Voyage of Apollo 13. It would be the basis of the box office hit Apollo 13, starring Tom Hanks as Jim Lovell, Kevin Bacon as Jack Swigert, and Bill Paxton as Fred Hayes. The story of Apollo 13 continues to be a source of inspiration worldwide. It's a testament to the power of the human spirit and the miracle of teamwork when faced with insurmountable odds. It's a reminder that when all hope seems lost, sometimes all we can do is keep a cool head, think, and do something to find a way forward. Here's Lovell's own words from his book. 
There are people who make things happen. There are people who watch things happen. And there are people who wonder what happened. To be successful, you need to be a person who makes things happen. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe down there and give this video a like. If you're on Spotify and you enjoyed the podcast, please give it a five-star review. See you soon. Follow for more and boom, now you know. Thank you.